My name is Patty Seaburn, and it is my privilege to teach poetry here at Cal State Long Beach. Today you will hear from four wonderful young poets, Idalith Bustos, Jaira Deng, Angelica Hooper, and Andrew Liu. These poets have imbued powerful emotions with the musicality of language in ways that will reach out and touch your hearts and make you think of the ways that your lives too are poems. Thank you and enjoy. Over the reckoning of last year, I've turned 19 to 21, watching womanhood arrive from the windows of my childhood home. Taking in the sunset's bruised haze, I pine for the subway upheaval of a city that could kill me. I've grown grateful for the rush hour traffic on the 101, the smog browning the Sierra's tips, calcifying my lungs. In quarantine, my body has become a flag of need. I confess to having fallen in love with strangers in the backdrop of their bedrooms. Through the dim light of a Zoom screen, we are relearning tenderness in the human gaze. This uncertainty is a blessing. The small talk we took for granted, now breathing each other's words with consequence. I ask my friends to tell me where their sadness creeps between sleep and work because I'm trying to write where a cough is just a throat clearing and we bloom fresh produce from the community garden. Yes, there's a future where the choice are you and I gathered together, all our familiar edges, elbows rubbing like hands instinctively rise to cup a lover's head between your palms. Learning to see the light. I praise the opening of palms, praise the sifting of soil under swift hands, the opening of windows, the swoosh of my neighbor's door, the way we laugh despite the masking of our mouths. We have been in quarantine for months. I have potted and repotted more indoor plants than I can count, a personal landscape of pothos ferns, joys that rear their silky heads against the budding light. Every morning, I map the city's geography, take quiet measure of our changing lives. Nobody came prepared for a world where the physical was abstract, so I reach and dream for the letter R, respond, recall, reply, strong consonants. My Mexican tongue rolls, reconectar, renovar, respirar. In indoor spaces, we manifest growth. My green thumb begs to hold loved ones, my mother regrows her rented garden, tending as it sprawls, begonias, peonies, sunflowers, all flowers that accept loss so easily. I wonder how many shoots have taken root? How many more have said goodbye? We understand now that grieving is a vacant lot, but you and I are growers. I grow language that needs entrañas, remix vowels, inhale, exhale, and opening of breathing, casting OOOs of filaments that tendril their way across our divides. I grow imaginary fields of lavender, speckles of purple hope. Dangerous bees lie underneath the surface. Whether it's motives, intent, fictional, or facts, once imputed, that demon begins to rear its head. All you hear is, code red, code red, get back. There has been a lot of destruction in the past year and six months. There has been a lot of turmoil we blindly allow to slip by until the universe has had enough and decides to pull the wool from our eyes. All you hear then is, wake up, wake up, open your eyes. We have been exposed to more than just the flu, just another shooting and protest and civil unrest. We've been exposed to the faulty system and infrastructure capitalism hasn't repaired yet. Down on our luck, we strived best. Applied pressure produced diamonds that shine beyond the four walls of our homes we've been bunkered in. A lockdown allowed us to slow down, smell the roses and see what's valuable and most important, time, family, and a peace of mind. I strive best when I was surrounded as I am surrounded by mine. I became an essential member. I stared us through the tides. This invisible enemy took a lot, but when we stand together and treat each other with humanity and dignity, we've proven how resilient we are. This is not what you were looking for. 
This is not the laugh or spark that can goes hope into a force within you. This is yet more pain and suffering. This is more news at six o'clock, and automatic alerts at midnight, your hand stuck gripping your head and kneading the migraine from it. This is not the elixir. This is not the grail, not the fountain of youth. This is just another train, just another vehicle, another cycle, another one-way ticket to another synonym for nowhere. This isn't a poem. It's another strain, another variant, a mutation in the language and the culture we breathe, another nation struggling with case resurgences, another CDC suggestion, another amendment to national restrictions. This is the longest you've been without a job, without rent. And this is not a story where you triumph alone. This is not the kind of poem that delivers you the truth with free shipping on all readings value $35 and over. This is not you finding an answer in the world of the external. This is you looking in a mirror, a sea of personal doubt and national insecurity, and asking this same question. This is you staring at a dark phone and seeing your own face reflected in the black. This is you turning off the TV and answering its blank stare with your own stubborn reflection. Good morning beach family and supporters of the beach. Wasn't that just amazing and moving? Each one of us probably... <laughs> yes, yes, the talent of our students really brought something special and, and poignant from each one of us in the threads of poetry that were shared. What a way to start off our morning by featuring a few of our many talented beach students and recent graduates as they shared their inspirational and illuminating poetry. For those students, you've taught us just in that moment to appreciate your activism and willingness to show what passion for justice, for truth, for change looks like. Thank you for sharing your voices with us this morning. I also want to thank Patty Seaburn, professor in the English department, who is a fierce supporter, encourager, and leader of our students in the creative writing department. Under her direction, she trains students to transform their words into verbal poetry that speaks their life truths. What a moving example of what makes the beach great for all. Welcome, welcome to the 2021 annual convocation. We are now in session. My name is Karen Sism Gunn, and I am Provost and Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs. Thank you, Beach family. I began my journey with you here at the beach on July 1st. So if you're new to campus like me, I say, welcome to the beach. We also have beach members who've been serving this mission for over 50 years. So to you and all within that time span, I say, welcome back to the beach. Welcome back feels different, though, this year, doesn't it? The happiness of reuniting with people we know or admire or enjoy working with is admittedly blunted by the lingering affect of this year and a half, and frankly, what still lies ahead. We have colleagues we've worked with, but we've never met yet. We have office mates we've worked with for years, Yet lately, our whole being has been the Hollywood squares of a Zoom meeting and the waving goodbye at the end of a meeting, right? Things we never contemplated before. We have some students entering their second year with us here at the beach 
who likely had to end one milestone remotely, maybe high school or earning an associate degree, only to have to start the next phase of their academic journey, also largely remotely. We will have new students, first time students ever being able to say, I am a college graduate, I am a college student, but who still won't get to fully experience the ebb and the flow and the hum and the vibe of a busy beach campus at full tilt this semester. This has been our story, family. Each one of us is somewhere in this story. The sheer reality of it. Let us take a moment to acknowledge this journey and personally, just in your spaces, reflect as you choose. We stand together. Thank you. Before we continue the program, I wanted to take a moment for that heartfelt welcome and all of the heartfelt welcomes that I've been receiving from the entire Beach family, including our extended community family, from President Connolly, her beloved colleague, her executive team, on which I now proudly sit, members of our extraordinary faculty and staff, our academic deans and their college teams, a shout out to the provost's senior leadership team, hey, many administrators and staff from across the campus, our ASI leaders. I've met students when I've been out and about wearing my beach mask and their faces just light up. Friends of Cal State Long Beach and the city of Long Beach who have so much faith and confidence in what this campus does and will continue to do. I am downright excited about what we're going to accomplish together. From the core of my heart, thank you all. Let us begin by acknowledging the Gabrielino Tongva peoples as the traditional land care, uh, caretakers of Tavangar and are grateful to have the opportunity to work at the sacred site of Puvunga. We pay our respects to the ancestors, elders, and relatives, relations, past, present, and emerging. As I've learned over the years, a team's effectiveness often reflects the strengths, dispositions, and commitments of its leader. With every accolade and success story and innovative idea brought forward to fruition here at the beach, we know that this is possible, possible largely because of each division's leader. Our divisional vice presidents, my crew, guide with strategic vision and expertise. And I can tell you, they are some pretty cool, impressive people in their own right. Let's take a few moments to hear from each of them now. Scott Appel, Vice President for the Division of Administration and Finance, and on behalf of everyone in our division, I want to welcome new convocation and a new academic year. I want to thank all the faculty and staff in the university for your perseverance during this very difficult time. Your commitment to our students and our educational mission is truly inspiring. Although everyone has been working hard during this unprecedented time, I wanted to shine a light on the employees in my division that have continued to come to campus to keep the university running. Environmental health and safety, custodial, grounds, skilled trades, design and construction, university police services, payroll, benefits, cashiers, and my senior leadership team. The last year and a half was not easy, but all the faculty and staff of the university have continued to provide the best educational experience possible whether they did it at home or on campus. Thank you and go Beach. Hi, I'm Beth Lesson, Vice President of Student Affairs. This past year, each one of our 500 staff members rose to meet the challenges presented by the pandemic to support our students. Over 12,000 vaccinations, food pantry pop-ups, emergency grants, and emergency housing. 1,300 programs and workshops, including many focused on social justice and inclusion. 
1,800 laptops and 3,200 hotspots distributed. And we just opened the beautiful Parkside North building. More than 472 beds. This is our 24-7 experiential learning laboratory. I've witnessed this division repeatedly go above and beyond, fueled by their intense commitment to our students. Thank you, Student Affairs. Thank, Thank you, Student, student affairs. affairs. Welcome back to the campus and to the new semester. Thank you all for keeping our campus programs going and our services delivered despite the pandemic. In the past academic year, the Division of IT have added a large number of technology services to help the campus community transition from in-person classes to online classes. For example, our technology loan program to students, which is a joint effort with the Division of Student Affairs, provided laptop computers and internet hotspots to our students who needed the equipment to attend classes online. Moving forward, the Division of IT will continue to introduce new technology services to enable the campus community to realize our Beach 2030 goals. Hello, and welcome back to the Beach. I am Michelle Cheska, and I proudly serve as Vice President of University Relations and Development. Our campus has come so far and been through so much since the beginning of the pandemic, but I know we're all eager to return to the beach enthusiastic to do great things together again, and reconnecting with friends, colleagues, faculty, staff, and students. Like the rest of the campus community, university relations and development has been hard at work over the last year, and we've had some great results. One of the division's chief responsibilities is fundraising. And despite the numerous challenges posed by the pandemic, the university had a stellar year. Through partnerships with the president, colleges, and program directors, university relations and development led the university to its best fundraising year ever, raising more than $46 million in philanthropic monies. On the heels of this success, and as we build a strong culture of philanthropy at the beach, it is my privilege to announce the university will launch its leadership phase of our comprehensive campaign this fall with a goal to raise $275 million. One example of philanthropic investment at the beach is the Anna W. Nye Alumni Center, currently under construction on Beach Drive and slated to open in spring 2022. This project, like others on our campus, signals that Cal State Long Beach is a mature, forward-thinking institution that enjoys the support and endorsement of the entire beach family. It's going to be a beautiful facility, one that will, that will benefit not just alumni, but also the beach faculty, staff, and students who use it. Our departments in URD continue to raise awareness of the university and tell the great stories from our campus. We're building and strengthening relationships each and every day with alumni, friends, corporations, foundations, and government leaders. This past year, our division also had the privilege of leading the planning as we celebrated the graduating classes of 2020 and 2021 with concurrent commencement ceremonies at Angel Stadium. With over 25,000 eligible beach graduates, we are pleased to partner with divisions across the campus to celebrate the students and their tremendous accomplishments. In closing, I want to express my gratitude to my colleagues in URD's various departments of development, gift planning, strategic communications, and university relations. Your work throughout the past year has been exemplary and helped make it possible for the university to celebrate and amplify its success, as well as to plan for a very bright future. Thank you, everyone, and go Beach. Welcome to the Beach. My name is Andy Fee, and I have the pleasure of serving as your Executive Director of Athletics here at CSULB. We are excited to return to a competitive and successful 2021-22 athletic season. Over the past year, we have faced many challenges, but saw our student athletes return to competition as well as reaching new heights academically, setting a new record in our graduation success rate of 91%. In just the last year, we saw a number of individual and team conference champions from our winter and spring sports that were back in action and three of our coaches and six former student athletes are representing their nations at the Summer Olympics in Tokyo, continuing the tradition of Olympians from this university 
in every summer game since the school's founding in 1949. As a reminder, admission to all home sporting events for athletics is free for students, and we hope to see you cheering on our student athletes as they compete at the highest level of the NCAA over your time here at this wonderful university. As always, go Beach! Our leadership team reaching across the entire campus to make sure that we are moving forward. I really appreciate being a member of your crew and uh, I'm looking forward to what we will continue doing together in leadership for the beach. Thank you so very much. Let's take a moment to recognize other leaders on campus. Continuing to head up the beach's educational missions as well as maintaining extraordinary leadership in these historic times are our deans. I've quickly learned that their combined passion, commitment to our students and to their faculty is a true testament to why we are Beach Strong. To our deans, thank you. We are especially pleased to welcome Dr. Jenny Ree as our new Dean of the College of Engineering. Dr. Ree has a proven record of accomplishment around community engagement, leadership skills, and strategic thinking. She's also an accomplished engineer with full command of the technical aspects and requirements that she will tap into to lead the college with excellence and distinction. Welcome to the beach, Dean Ree. I'd like to recognize our nine frontline associate deans, the ADs, who facilitate the operational aspects of their respective colleges. They work in scenarios that call for quick pivot and collaboration from a don't stop until it's done mindset. And our 61 department chairs, who have some of the most challenging commitments on this campus, these people translate educational policies they execute these policies, implement requirements for our students, faculty, academic staff, and classroom spaces. They assure our students have the courses they need when they need them. They facilitate the instructional research and service needs of the Beach faculty, the intellectual brain trust of our learning environment. Thank you. and especially to our faculty. You pivoted, transitioned, found ingenious ways to instruct and deliver for our students. Thank you for being exemplars of understanding, patience, and commitment to your students while still dispensing excellence in the classroom. For remembering our students came to us to be with you, to learn from you, to grow through you, and you've given of yourselves to make sure our students have the very best learning experience possible, no matter what. I hear stories of your quick intuition and creative solutions that have benefited the whole campus. And to all of the staff and MPPs who through your commitment have threaded key connections to and through our campus with skill and commitment, in a million virtual ways. That's how we do it here at the beach. Thank you. We have outstanding student vision and leadership here at the beach. President Jesus Gonzalez, who you'll hear from soon, with ASI uh, at serving as the ASI president, is leading the helm with this entire student governance team. Thank you, Jesus, for your dedication to our campus, to your peers in these unprecedented times. In addition, I'd like to recognize the following campus leaders. Their names are projected there 
and we want to acknowledge the myriad ways that they contribute to the movement of this campus forward in their respective roles. <clears throat> to you, on behalf of the entire university, thanks to you for your strength, expertise, and commitment to the success of our students, your colleagues, our faculty, our staff. We will do great things together. Each year, we carefully select a number of exceptional students to be admitted as recipients of the President's Scholarship Program. The scholarship program is highly visible in the state of California and the nation. I now ask all of our presidential scholars to stand to be recognized. Where are you, scholars? Yes. This special group of high achieving students truly represent the best and the brightest of the beach. We are so proud of you. We are thankful that you have decided to continue and pursue your educational dreams with, here at, with us at the beach, and we've got you. We will support your success in every measurable way. Thank you, and congratulations. Before we move on, let me say how grateful the university is to our Alumni Association, President's Associates, individual donors, of whom some of you've heard uh, from, uh, by, uh, from VP Jessica, Jessica earlier, and the Division of Student Affairs for your invaluable partnership of the President's Scholarship. The success of this organization would not be possible without you, and we thank you. Another group of students here today, virtually, are our 2021 Long Beach College Promise students. These students represent the efforts of the Long Beach College Promise program, which makes possible the promise of a college education to every student in the Long Beach Unified School District. This innovative and award-winning initiative is transforming the lives of students, including our students with us online today. And this is a demonstration of the manifestation of the aims of this program. We welcome you to the beach, although virtually, but we can still give you a shout out. And we are so proud of you to our Long Beach College Promise students. Now let's welcome to the stage our new Academic Senate Chair, Dr. Neil Holtgren. He holds a BA in English and French and has a PhD in English and Language and Literature. Dr. Holtgren's research interests include Victorian studies, British imperialism, and post-colonial theory. He has become a tremendous collaborative campus partner to me personally and to the campus at large. We are so pleased to hear from him now. Dr. Holkren, the stage is yours. Hi, my name is Neil Holtgren. I'm an English professor at CSULB, and I'm speaking today as the chair of our Academic Senate. The Senate is the main shared governance body on our campus. We are a deliberative group of students, staff, administrators, and faculty. We work cooperatively in biweekly meetings to develop policies, procedures, and practices and make recommendations to implement improvements on campus. Before I discuss the Academic Senate's work, 
I want to acknowledge that CSULB is located on the ancestral site of Pavanga. We are on the land of the Tongva, Gabrieleño, and the Ahashiman Wanenyo nations who have lived and continue to live here. I recognize the Tongva and Ahachiman nations and their spiritual connection as the first stewards and the traditional caretakers of this land. Welcome to CSU will be and welcome to the 2021-22 academic year. All of us have been through a lot over the what is now almost two years of this pandemic. Many of you, your family members, and your friends have struggled, and we have all been impacted to varying degrees. For the Academic Senate, our meetings usually involve 80 to 100 attendees, including senators, in a lecture hall. We continue to meet on Zoom since the transition away from in-person meetings in March 2020. Last academic year, senators authored a resolution condemning racism and anti-Asian violence in society. We reshaped our general education curriculum to affirm the importance of ethnic studies for our students. And we collaborated to revise the university's academic integrity policy to make processes around cheating and plagiarism clearer for everyone. Our executive committee, in the wake of George Floyd's murder, crafted an action plan to make the Senate more inclusive. We continue our work to implement this plan. The Senate has also been in constant conversation with the university administration about COVID and its effects. Discussions on campus have been transformed. Questions over masking now take precedence over questions about mascots. Though I will admit, I still do think fondly sometimes about the Kraken and the Stingray that were nearly our mascots. Um, I often wonder what that would have been like if they were the you know, symbol of the university. In the Senate, more specifically, we spend time sharing concerns and requesting answers to questions about the safety and well-being of everyone on campus and in our community. President Connolly is on our meetings to provide these answers, which we appreciate. In the upcoming year, we are excited to be working with our new provost, Karen Sism Gunn, Members of our executive committee have had the pleasure of getting to know her during summer meetings. Even though there have been so many losses and sacrifices in the last two years, I can still recall um, when I think about it, the last in-person class that I had in March 2020 in the faces of my students, three goals will guide me during this academic year. The goals are demystification, compassion, and student learning. I invite you to let them guide you as well. First, I want to demystify the work we do in the Academic Senate and at the university more broadly. Many of our students, staff, and faculty are new to such a big and complex institution of higher education like CSULB. And I want everyone to be comfortable asking questions and learning more about how the university works. If you have a concern Senate should address or you want to sit in on one of our meetings, don't hesitate to ask us. This year, we are committed to making the Senate more welcoming and inclusive to all on campus. Second, Academic Senate will move forward with compassion. I'm not one to look for a silver lining in a crisis, and I'm certainly not one who would use this moment to force us all into online learning as our default, but I appreciate how the last months have made us aware that policies, processes, and institutions can further marginalize people who are already vulnerable. This year, I want the Academic Senate to think and plan and operate with an awareness of the vulnerability of everyone in our community. The challenges we face at CSULB around food, housing, and mental health 
are inseparable from the climate crisis, inequity and inequality, and the past, present, and future of COVID-19 in the US and the world. We cannot ignore these crises, and we will keep vulnerability front and center in our shared work. Finally, I will work with senators to ensure that student learning is central to our path forward. We're all here at CSULB to help students learn, a process that should be pleasurable, interesting, and provoke enthusiasm, even if it can be, and should be often, difficult and disorienting at the same time. As we discuss policies around accessible textbooks, course grades, withdrawing from classes, and hiring administrators this upcoming year, we won't lose sight of the texture of learning, the desire to explore and cultivate interest in an idea or field central to higher education. I have missed and look forward again to talking to students in the hallway or hearing about what issues and ideas interest faculty, staff, and administrators after meetings. This year, let's keep the focus on learning and curiosity that unite our community independent of any utilitarian goals. Thank you for letting me share with you these emphases on dis demystifying the Senate and university, acting with compassion, and remaining mindful of student learning. Once again, welcome to CSULB. I wish you the best in the upcoming academic year. Please don't hesitate to seek me or your senators out with questions and ideas. And as we say, go beach. Thank you, Dr. Holtgren, for sharing your vision around demystifying the campus operations toward removing barriers, keeping a focus on inclusion, compassion, and being aware of the vulnerability of students. Thank you. As we parlay this into excellent student learning, we look forward to, to working with you this year and the Academic Senate in our shared vision. Dr. John Hamilton, and Dr. Anna Ortiz. Both serve as co-chairs of the Beach President's Commission on Equity and Change. John is the Associate Vice President for University Access and Retention and is a staunch advocate for equity and diversity in urban schools. As a leader within student affairs, he is committed to equity, inclusion, and positive change. Anna, has been a student development educator as a professor or practitioner for over 30 years. Her research interests center on college student development, primarily in ethnic identity development and multicultural education. She was also recognized as faculty of the year in the 2021 year. I welcome to the stage, John Hamilton and Anna Ortiz. Quick shout out to Division of Student Affairs. Good morning, everyone. I am honored to welcome everyone back to campus via hybrid, remote, and or in person. Over the past several months, we as a campus have had to take an intentional inventory of what we dream is fair and what is equitable in regards to race and being student ready for all students. I, have, I am often asked the question about racial equity and how do we address this equity without breaking any laws like Prop 209. When someone mentions Prop 209, I think about my many summer's nights as a little boy in Jamison, Florida, walking to my grandmother's house and having to hide in a ditch, not knowing whether the white men in the truck coming towards me were Klansmen. When I think about Prop 209, I think about how many times I have been pulled over by police at gunpoint which happens to be over 10 times. When I think about Prop 209, I think about my daughter at five years old being told by her white friend that her mother told her she could not play with her anymore because of the color of her skin. 
When I think about Prop 209, I think of the words of the late Congress member, John Lewis, when he said, we need to get into good trouble, necessary trouble, and redeem the soul of America. The, mur the murder of George Floyd and what we have seen with Asian hate and homophobia has cracked the foundation of equal justice, and many of us have, reflect, have to reflect on what's next. Although Black Lives Matter is no longer trending in social media, although Black Lives Matter is not normalized in our regular conversations, Black lives still matter. I want to thank the Black Faculty and Staff Association, Dr. Shelley Collins, Dr. Angela Locks for supporting the university with the well-being of faculty, staff, and students to counter the impact of trauma on black and other communities of color. Last year, President Connolly uttered the words, one beach, meaning to bring us all together. Because of that, the President's Equity and Change Commission has been working hard to examine and to interrogate hiring practices and policies for faculty and staff close opportunity gaps for historically underserved students, and create accountability mechanisms for equity and change, just to name a few. We have almost completed a very ambitious strategic equity plan, but it's a plan for the entire university, and we will be responsible for that. Guided by the President and Equity and Change Commissioners, it is the plan created for all and not for some. Finally, Last year, many of you stood with me and other groups who were harmed, traumatized by racism, hate, and ignorance. I and others called you allies. I respectfully would like my allies now to become my accomplices, my collaborators, my co-disruptors to address equity and change on our campus, colleges, classrooms, budgets, data, resources, and student services. I know we have heard the saying, the mind is a terrible thing to waste. I would hate to think what an action on our part as thought leaders and thought partners would be. In the words of the great James Baldwin, for these are all our children, we will, profit, we will all profit by or pay for what they will become. Now we hand it over to my co-disruptor, Dr. Anna Ortiz. All right. Thank you, John, for getting them all fired up. Um, so 40 years ago, I attended my first cultural diversity workshop when I was a freshman at UC Davis. Higher education was different at that time. I was uh, one of the only Latinx students in almost all of my classes, in my residence halls, and that continued off and off throughout my career. Back then, cultural appreciation was just that. It was our hope that our peers and our faculty would understand that we valued our cultures, were unique, and wanted to remain that way. But back then, whiteness was ubiquitous, and it was a struggle for students of color to oppose the magnetic pull to assimilate. And now, what a difference a lifetime makes. <laughs> um, I came to Long Beach because of the students. And I just wanted to give a quick shout out. This year, I welcome my sister Liz, a new MSW student to the beach. Yay, thank you. <laughs> I'm heartened every time I walk across campus or teach in my Zoom room. Our students are vibrant and hardworking, having overcome so many challenges just to get here, um, sometimes every day. They are the definition of a highly diverse campus. And it makes me so happy that their experience is so different than mine. I hear stories from them about how much they love CSULB and how proud they are to be here. However, at times, through their tears, I hear stories of microaggressions, exclusion, and pain. In my role as a faculty member, I've heard the same from our faculty and staff joy in working with our diverse students, and satisfaction with the community they have found with colleagues, but also stories of belittlement, invisibility, and lack of support. 
Therefore, I am proud that the beach has made such a staunch commitment to do better. The challenges made in Beach 2030, the intergroup dialogue initiative, the campus climate survey work, all the equity-oriented training offered through the Faculty Center, and of course the work of the Equity and Change Commission and Network, 60 members strong. All of these entities are working hard to make the beach a place where all members experience success, a sense of belonging, and equity. I'm humbled and honored to be a part of our transformation, and we count on you to be a part of it too. Thank you. Thank you, Doctors Hamilton and Ortiz, for calling the things out that need to be signaled and called out, and for your commitment to disrupt until change is operationalized and evident. Thank you for your efforts, and we stand with you. Next, we welcome ASI President Jesus Gonzalez. Jesus is a fourth year sociology student pursuing a minor in political science. He's aiming to earn a master's degree in counseling with an option in school counseling. As a first generation undocumented college student, Jesus recognizes the barriers that many students face in higher education. I recently met with Jesus and Lindsay Apaza, executive vice president and chair of the ASI board of directors. On behalf of ASI, they expressed a vision and ideas for making the beach experience exceptional for all students. Welcome, Jesus. Thank you, Provost Sism Gunn, for the introduction. And thank you, President Connolly, for this amazing invitation. It is an honor and privilege to be here today, and hello, Long Beach State. My name is Jesus Gonzalez, and I'm the ASI president for the 2021-2022 school year. I would like to be begin by recognizing and acknowledging that this campus is located in the traditional homeland occupied by the Gabrieleño Tangwa people. We respect and value the many ways that Tangwa, a Hachiman culture, heritage, and beliefs continue to have significant to the living people and remind us about the sacred and spiritual relationship that has always existed here at what now we call Long Beach State. I'm a first generation undocumented proud Latino student from a low income community where I had limited access to educational resources. Growing up, it was not an expectation for my family and I to continue my edu education past 12th grade. But stepping foot on Long Beach State campus changed that for me. When my brother decided to attend LBSU, it helped me see the value of getting a college degree. I realized that Long Beach offered a pathway to enhance my academic skills, increase my professional development, and become part of a large community. When my brother graduated in 2016 the College of Business, little did I know that I would be joining the beach community in 2018, in addition to that, becoming the ASI president. However, the application process was challenging, especially for undocumented folks like myself. I was initially accepted in the Spanish Bachelor's of Arts program in 2018, but shortly after, my admissions was rescinded. Despite the initial setback, I was determined and resilient. I sought out assistance from the university's educational opportunity program and refused not to give up. With their assistance, I successfully appealed the admissions decision and became a full-time student a week before school started. EOP helped me find a way at home at Long Beach State. And since my arrival, I have connected with campus counselors, participate in numerous programs, and have held several leadership roles. EOP encouraged me to explore my interest in leadership and politics. I've been able to work with passionate students, faculty, staff, and administrators to advocate for positive change. As ASI president, it is my goal to serve as a resource for our campus, just like EOP was a resource for me, and provided these incredible and reliable resources and support systems for all of our students. I'm looking forward to helping students develop a sense of belonging at Long Beach State, their involvement opportunities, and highlighting available resources. Representing my fellow students is a privilege that I do not hold in the highest regard. 
I will use my elected role to bridge our many communities together, listen to diverse perspectives, and advocate for the needs of our students. I have the responsibility to connect, educate, and engage, and empower above all else. I will hold true to these core values and let them be my decision making in all cases. One of my top initiatives in this, in this year is the implementation of an assistance program to our undocumented students. Being an undocumented student myself, this effort is close to my heart. This program will reduce food insecurity by providing food resources to our undocumented students, international students, and AB 540, who do not qualify for the traditional CalFresh benefits. With this in initiative, I am proud to announce that Long Beach State will be the first CSU to implement this program in this institution. Another one of my goals includes an educational campaign to create awareness that our campus is located in a traditional native homeland. We must continue to recognize the rich history of the land and remain area known as Pavanga, the gathering place. I also plan to work closely with counseling and psychological services to increase our available mental health and wellness resources and to remove any barriers when accessing these services. My ASI team and I are actively working to find ways to better support our students' mental health needs. I personally have seen the impact of this pandemic has done to the university and the mental well-being. I have also watched as political climate has pushed us farther away from each other. My vision for ASI is one that promotes community, inclusion, and education. I remain committed to learn from our students, hearing your needs, and focus on representing our many different identities to keep our students first. ASI is constantly working to better address the needs of our students and improve campus life for the beach community. In addition, we're making progress in our plans to make our programs more expansive, inclusive, and equitable. ASI has always been here for to guide students to uncertain times. And one thing the last two years have taught us is to expect the unexpected. Regardless of what this year brings us, we must persevere together to ensure our students feel safe and their voices matter. Let us work together as a campus community to navigate through these unpredictable times. We can do this by following safety protocols, being thoughtful of our learning options, and encouraging each other to seek help when needed. 2020 was a trying year for everyone, and I am grateful to our Beach family for coming together and moving forward, even with the many obstacles we faced. I continue to be inspired by your perseverance, determination, and ambition. Coming to this academic year, let us call upon these strengths to help us prevail despite the uncertainty of this pandemic. Let us also be empathetic to ourselves during these changing times and extend that compassion to others. I will always remain devoted to enhancing the welfare of our students and community at large. And now, I ask all of you to join me in continuing to support ASI and our students. I call upon you to be active in listening to our concerns of all students and doing what you can do to add a value to our beach community and a positive impact. I am proud student being here, and I'm proud to be at Long Beach State. And thank you for your ongoing dedication to Long Beach State. And until next time, go Beach. speaking to the students and uh, reflecting the wonderful work that you and the faculty and the staff of your colleges have all done in this time of crisis. I guess I want to express my deep gratitude to the many faculty and staff who have and will continue to work tirelessly to support the success of our students. Uh, thank you. We will get through this difficult time together and we will emerge stronger. Through this unprecedented time in our history, the dedicated staff at CSU will be persisted, working diligently to ensure the continuity of campus operations so that our students and faculty can work their magic in the classroom. One of the things that has become very apparent for me during this time is um, how different the circumstances are of every single one of our students and how much we have to be adaptable to make things work for them. It's not only about their physical space, it's about who they're sharing space with, if they have control of their space, if they're supported in their space. Um, and so that's that's been one of the huge pivots actually that I think 
all of us in the dance department have had to make is really um, kind of understanding what the unique circumstances are of each of our students. It's been very overwhelming for students, but I think just being there for them and being understanding and listening to them and showing that you're you're willing to adapt and accommodate for their sudden changes um, has helped um, alleviate a lot of stress in our students and just helped them a lot. CSULB is a place that not only talks about wanting diversity, but creating a space where diversity can flourish. We have great diversity among our students and who fills the seats in the classroom should be reflected as well with who stands in front of the classroom. Uh, I think it is vitally important for students to see how people from all cultures navigate space, express themselves through lectures, have some shared experiences and understand and model different paths to success. Uh, the faculty equity advocates help bring those things to life by working with the different colleges to attract, recruit, and retain a diverse cadre of faculty. Another thing that we are working on is uh, awareness. So we wanted to uh, have people to think and reflect on their current practice and to uh, acknowledge what can be improved and how we can do better. Uh, so we can go over uh, common overlooked biases uh, during the hiring process, for example, and also promoting an uh, equitable evaluation that is including in the recruitment, the hiring process, and also uh, the RTP practice as well. So people need to know we should not rely only on one uh, tool or mm -hmm. one element uh, for the whole process. Uh, we also have to acknowledge the inferences of uncon unconscious biases uh, when we making decisions. And we're working together with leadership in our colleges towards um, recognizing and fostering ways to make more inclusive environments for our faculty to succeed both in the classroom and in their own research. It's also really looking carefully at the best practices for helping achieve equity and advising across campus. There's a series of roundtable discussions going on that really bubbled up from within um, the advisors themselves because they know this is an important component of what they do with, with students, right? And to make sure that we, we find those barriers and remove those barriers when we can and to help students really achieve their goals. I had an opportunity to work with the city of Long Beach to not only co uh, moderate um, some of the health equity sessions um, around black health and black health equity, um, but I also um, worked with the team of our students to analyze um, some of their town halls and listening sessions um, to understand what were the community needs regarding um, policing, health outcomes, economics, um, homelessness. I know, as you say, we can't get rid of 400 years um, of oppression, but we can, I think, create um, a measurable change. And, and part of that um, will come, I think, from one of our signature programs, which is the Long Beach College Promise. And together, we're going to make sure that the beach is not only recognized here in the CSU and in the state of California, but we're going to be a force for public good that all will recognize, not only here, but across this country. Those were some powerful reflections from so many of our campus thinkers. And I'm confident that the thoughts that they expressed, the ideas that they shared, will be, continue to become uh, intertwined in the strategies that we will adopt and move forward within our strategic vision for what we see as the beach. Early in my tenure in California in the CSU, going on five years ago now, I learned of the Long Beach effect and recognized a system-wide level of high regard for the way the beach pursues its educational mission. From an outside perspective, Cal State Long Beach's remarkable accomplishments, accolades, and awards are evident. Here are, but are only a few of the numerous distinctions achieved by this campus. We have the largest graduating class in history in 2021 with more than 12,000 degrees conferred. 
Cal State Long Beach has also made significant progress in four-year graduation rates, more than doubling since 2009. Cal State Long Beach was awarded full 10-year reaffirmation of accreditation by the Western Association of Schools and Colleges Senior College and University Commission, known as WASC, this past year. And we are ranked number one in the nation for our impact on driving social mobility according to rankings by Education Reform Now. Cal State Long Beach ranks among the top of public institutions, best value, for best value, among four-year colleges and universities, according to a series of rankings by the online magazine Money. I had someone since I've been here ask me, what's the Cal State Long Beach secret sauce? As though I'm gonna tell our secrets. Now firmly planted in the beach community, I can clearly see the how behind the beach story. I see it from the inside now. Given the beach's sterling reputation, I'm thrilled and honored to serve as your provost, and now a member of this great engine of movement in higher education. But let me affirm for you, the beach excellence is in huge measure because of my predecessor, Dr. Brian Jersky who I would like to recognize now. As Provost Dr. Jersky publicly and emphatically declared that equity and diversity would take center stage here at the beach, and that student success needed to be on the minds and hearts of everybody on this campus, he also promised to increase access for all, for all those who were capable of and wanted to be here. And we are, friends, well on our way to, comp to accomplishing these aims. Today, we stand largely in this man's legacy. Dr. Jersky, you fulfilled your mission of Plato's Sacred Grove by helping us navigate the past, examine the present, and enable us to revolutionize the future. In addition, you've given freely to me, even after your day is done here at the beach after these years. You've listened to my ideas, you've helped me set my compass, and over this time and by this time, I now call you my friend. You are a remarkable, educator and humanitarian. We at the beach will always be grateful. Thank you, Dr. Jersky. In thinking about sharing remarks with you as we launch yet another year in uncertain times, it struck me that hurt begins to heal with hope. Hurts begin to heal with hope. We have all endured great societal upheaval and pain. In some spaces, we've grieved the pain of others. In other spaces, the pain has been entirely our own. You see, this once in a century global pandemic further illuminated societal inequities through COVID-related disease and health and death within our communities of color. This new but familiar profile has been particularly devastating and frightening. Oh, but wait. In 2020, in the midst of this pandemic, came in rapid succession new painful names to say out loud. Mr. Ahmad Arbery, while jogging. Ms. Brianna Taylor, while sleeping. And Mr. George Floyd, while suspected. Those nine minutes and 29 seconds seemed like an eternity. This moment in time has become a flashpoint for not only the black community, but many other 
underserved, abused, neglected, and marginalized communities that suffer immensely. We've seen so much hurt and so much pain in these 18 months. On a March day in 2021, eight people were senselessly murdered, seven being women and six of being, being of Asian descent. Why? Because of inner struggles. These are some of the highly visible tragedies. Think of the many untold instances of tragic injustice that don't get the same exposure. We've expressed grief over our, our BIPOC, AAPI, LGBT, LGBTQIA+, minority, religious groups, immigrants, undocumented people, and other sisters and brothers who were tragically lost, threatened, and made to feel less than, unwanted, or silenced. Projected here are the names of the 229 black lives lost since George Floyd's murder through instances of brutality. And let's just keep it real. These rates are at twice those experienced by white Americans. For our AAPI communities, over 6,600 hate incidents were reported within a year's time. Since then, that number has nearly doubled with 40% occurring in our state. Friends, that is what a snapshot of hurt, societal hurt, looks like and feels like. These have been our realities since 2020. But recall my words that hurts can begin to heal with hope. One of the common elements that we all share as humankind is hope. Notwithstanding the constant messages we're bombarded with that can feed hurt, or the circumstances that we may have personally come through, think about it. We here today, as a community, have the rare opportunity to work, to thrive, to grow, to dream, support, and be inspired in an environment whereby hope is a renewable resource. How very fortunate we are to align with and tap into this renewable source of hope. Higher education, right here at the beach. Our campus is more diverse than ever. We're making bold steps forward. Equity and social justice movements are at the forefronts of our conversations, as you've so heard spoken so eloquently from many of our colleagues this, just this morning. Also within our strategic vision, the future that we imagine for the beach. One thing we must make clear, however, is that we can't do what we've done in the past and call it all good. It's time for discomfort. It's time for some good trouble, necessary trouble. It's time for the beach movement. I know it's hard to look forward in many ways after these 18 months. It's a challenge to seize optimism about the future and what it may hold in some regards. The journey has been filled with curves and detours and historic changes, but as we embark together on a path forward, I believe our collectively open minds, mixed with a large amount of grace and purpose, will be our roadmap together. Hope. Each of you here today, or watching online, also represent the gear that turns the beach machine. If one gear stops, the whole machine can stop working. Each of us is a gear in the beach present and future. Hope. The notion of driven purpose is familiar and commonplace in my own journey. I grew up in the Deep South. I'm a child of the South. I was born and raised in Alabama. My family lived for many years on a college campus 
where as a child I was imprinted with the possible. My experience in every aspect of society in that college town was a living laboratory of success for me. My role models looked like me, the town's business persons, teachers, doctors, clergy, the mayor, college professors, the college president. I realized the impact of having examples of excellence that I could see in myself impressed me deeply. Now, as an educator, the power of our students seeing themselves in examples of success among our faculty, staff, and administrators is uber critical to their formative determination of themselves. Seeing it leads to being it. This is what makes our intent here at the beach to stride to create an equitable and inclusive community so that anyone here and who wants to be here has an opportunity to see success in themselves. Hope is renewed by our future. Here is Ariane Velasquez, 10 years old. According to an article in The Atlantic, as she was walking around a landscaped community college campus, she said this whole do your homework, go to college thing was starting to seem like a pretty good idea. And I quote, it's my first time being at a college and I'm amazed at what I'm seeing, Ariane said. She happens to be a member of the Long Beach College Promise Program. This program is the one where every fourth grade student in the Long Beach uh, public schools can attend a tour like this. And all fifth graders can visit California State University Long Beach, right here, the beach. The Promise extends the opportunity for a college education to every student in LBUSD. This is a transforming opportunity in the lives of students like those. The future. Don't you see hope and possibility, fascination in her eyes? We can open the door to her and our friends to what their futures could look like and help, her, and help both of all of them step through. Behind me are banners that serve as a visual reminder of how every decision, plan, and allocated expense is centered on the future of the beach. For the past two years, this campus developed comprehensive strategic priorities. And now comes the work of putting these ideas into practice, inside and outside the community, fully realizing all that's Beach 2030 and where we stand and its execution. You'll hear more about Beach 2030 from our visionary president, Dr. Connolly. Coming from a sister CSU campus, I had a unique perspective. Beach 2030 was mentioned in several circles for over two years. As I became familiar with the plan, I appreciated what it meant for the future of the beach. Today, we see audacious aspirations that have become spoken into existence alongside very practical steps. A campus that publicly claims that we can and we will do better toward becoming a truly equitable and inclusive campus. This, my fellow beach family, is precisely why I believed my purpose and aspirations aligned with yours here at the beach. I'm thrilled to roll up my sleeves, lean in with all of you to move the needle on the beach vision together with hope. I want to end my time with a philosophy from my dad that represented his coaching style, but more importantly, illuminated his life's purpose. My dad. My dad achieved remarkable success as a high school and college football coach, inducted into five halls of fame. What I admired most about him was how he lived with such intentionality. He saw his position as so much more than just a job. 
He felt his life's purpose was to elevate those around him. And he used the platform of sport to do so in the lives of many young men. He had a platform, but he invited others to join his space. It was at his funeral that I was struck by just how beloved he was. Many young men, now accomplished in their own rights, came to pay their final respects, and they wept like children. And they spoke of the ways that their lives were poured into by this human being. I knew that his life's intention was so much more than sports. His selfless commitment to others set afire my own dedication in my career to changing lives and the mission of putting others above oneself. In the critical mission of education, it can't be about yourself. There are personal accomplishments that will come along the way, but the mission of what we do inherently is not about ourselves. You know, after a game was, was won, he, the win was everybody's win. Everybody played a, a role and could collectively celebrate the success. But when the team lost, if there was a loss, he would own it and he would in the press, I remember press conferences where he would, he would own those, those mistakes and would say that they were all his. That humble approach kept his hands open to the possibility I share this with you because I want my time here with you at the beach to reflect this philosophy in toto. Any successes that we achieve will be for all of us to share and enjoy. As I lead academic affairs, I want to remain open to striving, understanding, and bringing more opportunities to all here at the beach. Each of us has a role to play in our campus success each of us, we're all here for a reason, for such a time as this. We're here for a purpose, to apply our gifts and insights and work together. And I firmly believe that we each bring unique gifts and, talent and talents to the collective effort. As the 2021 fall semester begins, I wish all of you joy, wisdom, understanding, temperance and hope in the year that lies ahead as we all celebrate the many and varied achievements of this great university. We are Team Beach, and I could not be prouder to see where we're going to go. Thank you. I now have the honor of introducing Dr. Jane Connolly, president of Cal State Long Beach, the beach. When a campus has as many successes as Cal State Long Beach, it doesn't come by chance or good luck. The first way to determine a campus's merits is to look at its leadership. Dr. Connolly, you've helped this campus become what we are today through your leadership, your vision. Perhaps one of the things I admire most about our president is her commitment to advocating for all in an equitable and inclusive and courageous way. She's a true champion of others. Her vision includes ensuring that our campus includes space where ideas and programs that break down barriers for our current and future students, faculty, and staff not only exist, but come to fruition. Her support of initiatives underscores these values and proves that she paves the way for them to become a reality. And on a personal note, I'd like to thank you, President Connolly, for inviting me to join the beach space. For that, I'm grateful, and I'm excited about all that we get to partake as we move your vision forward. What a remarkable time for the beach. Please join me in welcoming President Jane Close Connolly. Hey, hi everybody. Hi everyone. I'm really so excited to be here. A uh, special hi to my president's scholars. Wave at me. Not that I can really see you, but I trust that you're there. Um, 
uh, and certainly their families and to the Long Beach College Promise students who are live, I hope, I hope joining us on live screen, at, live stream, excuse me, to, and to our new faculty and staff. I saw some of your pictures and names up there. And of course, to all of our returning faculty and staff, students, and a special welcome to all of you who are here in person and a special welcome to Kali Conley, my best friend. I also want you to welcome uh, and give me a chance to welcome some new uh, people at the beach. Sean Ferrara, our new Senior Associate Athletic Director for External Affairs. I don't know if Sean's here, but wave to him. <clears throat> Dr. S Dr. Sandra Perez, new Director of our University Honors Program. See, Sandra, that's a very good picture. I, she was worried about the picture. I think it's a great picture. And Elijah Sims, our new project director of the Long Beach College Promise. <clears throat> so all happy, all happy news for us. But then there was 2020. Um, and what a time we've had. We've really had to confront, as you've heard so eloquently from speakers before me, multiple and overlapping challenges to physical, mental health, racial justice, economic well-being, and workplace and home disruptions. We've been separated from coworkers, friends, and extended family, and we've had to live in a remarkably ambiguous context, uh, influenced by the virus, and the virus says, I guess, uh, systemic racism and the amplification of existing fault lines in our society related to access to housing, to food, to digital assets, and to social support. You know, we knew this amplification of needs affected our students, but I recently, uh, I should say end, I recently received a report co-authored uh, by Dr. Christina Lovato from School of Social Work, Dr. Deborah, Dr. Deborah Ham, a lecturer from the College of Education and co-chair of the Beaches CFA, and Corey O'Toole from our Faculty Staff Assistance Program that revealed that some of our own faculty members experienced food and housing insecurity because of the pandemic. I am sure this was also true, if not documented in this report, among our staff members. So I will follow the uh, author's suggestion and work toward establishing a wellness uh, committee for faculty and staff so we can be agile in connecting those in need to appropriate resources on and off campus. Our new employee assistance program called Empathia should uh, be very useful in this arena. No one's alone at the beach. We all have each other's backs. Thank you authors for that very compassionate work. Despite all the challenges, look at us. We're here almost like always, a little smaller, but sharing good food, conversation, and energy for the future. And I'm so glad to really see you. I'm so grateful for all the extraordinary work that you've done over the past seven years of my presidency, and particularly over the past year and a half. My message today will touch briefly on the past 18 months, but my primary thoughts are about the future. As you know, while most of us were safe in our homes during the height of the pandemic, lots was happening on campus, and VP Appel's um, uh, video gave you a picture of that. So, but please notice all the construction, all built, by the way, to the highest standards of sustainability. This standard creates climate resilience for the future of the campus. That's a Beach 2030 imperative. A special note is our new student housing and the renovation of much of our older student housing stock, the Anna Nye Alumni Center construction, and the Cleefield Contemporary Expansion and Renovation. So thank you donors uh, and to Beach Building Services for making these key campus improvements possible. Academic Affairs and Student Affairs distributed almost $45 million directly to students since the start of the pandemic and will distribute another almost 80 million in 2021-22. And we have supported a robust basic needs program in partnership with ASI, which includes, includes food, rapid rehousing, and medical assistance. And I've really appreciated the partnership 
between student affairs and our division of information technology that, as you heard, uh, resulted in our distribution of that more than a thousand laptops and more than three thousand uh, more than a thousand laptops and Chromebooks and over three thousand hotspots. And we continued our work on the proposed physical master plan that includes affordable housing for faculty, staff, and students, outdoor collaboration and classroom space, and this will be a favorite among some of you, bike and skateboard paths separate from pedestrians. I've heard a lot about that. <laughs> and of course, uh, uh, highlighting some of walking tours and campus tours that, to, to visit some of the really iconic sites on our campus, and that's just a few highlights. And there'll be a few more town halls this September to complete the work on this 10-year plan. So please take part in this vital effort. This, this is actually what guides what and where we build on campus. Our vaccine pod on campus has delivered, I think by now, well over 13,000 doses of the Pfizer vaccine. And by the way, shots are still available on campus. Can I say this any louder? Get vaccinated, please get vaccinated. The beach is back only because of vaccines. Thank you, Student Health and all the Division of Student Affairs staff members who focus relentlessly on health and wellness and healing from a variety of traumas this year, including racial trauma. And thank you, University Police Service and other staff from admin and finance and information technology who were in support of the vaccination pod. As you enter many of our academic spaces, notice that they've been renovated and improved. The campus never closed, and we did get lots accomplished. My sincere thanks to all who made that happen, especially Beach Building Services and our construction and planning group. So there went 2020. As we create our future, remember the values that guide us. As we consider programs, we've made and are yet to make uh, on our uh, Beach 2030 adventure. Diversity is our strength. The public good is our responsibility. Teaching and learning are at the center of who we are and all we do. Compassion, creativity, and innovation characterize our culture. We've reached another critical milestone in our 10-year Beach 2030 adventure. We've identified our Office of Strategic Planning under the direction of Dushi Sathyanation as the monitoring and coordinating unit for Beach 2030 for the next three years. The action areas have been identified. You see them behind me. Leadership teams in each area are forming, and we've just been moving forward on several strategies linked to our action zones. And let me give you just a few examples, and these are just a few examples, and you'll see some people's names or divisional names under, uh, underneath some of these uh, strategies. But please know that there are many, many other people um, involved. We are becoming a more student-ready university. We must ensure all, and I emphasize all, no matter their income level, their family educational attainment, their ethnicity, their sexual orientation or identity, religion, veteran status, political leanings, history of incarceration, or varied, varied ability status, and all the intersections that might go there, all who show up after meeting our rigorous entrance requirements will have a pathway for academic and personal development and upward mobility. Some examples of progress, and these again are just a few of them, range from new mentoring programs to internships to laptops and hotspots and virtual advising and health consultations. Thanks to everyone mentioned on the slide and, and to the many other people who are involved in this. We are building a more equitable and empowering culture that is compassionate and characterized by a strong sense of belonging. Examples of progress range from our newly reorganized Commission on Equity and Change that you heard so eloquently about from John and Anna, targeted funding for students involved in social justice work, to new hires who are more representative of our student body, and to the many authors of equity plans across the university that include a special focus on our transgender community members. Thanks to everyone who's working to build equity at the beach. 
And we are advancing partnerships to strengthen our public mission while strengthening our institutional priorities. Examples range from the refocus of our Long Beach College Promise Program to all the camps and clinics and centers and on and off campus cl clinics and centers, a focused and innovative fundraising to create new forward-looking models of education and research, and efforts to develop resources off campus to house our faculty, staff, and students. So special thanks and a shout out to Simon Kim for his new work in economic development for the campus. Thank you, Simon. We have a lot of reimagining to do. Um, and the probably the pandemic accelerated some of that and slowed some other parts of it down, but we'll push forward. We are refining policies and infrastructure for work format and professional development to positive positively influence staff morale and work-life balance. Examples of efforts range from new and focused training programs designed for career enhancement to new recognition programs to celebrate the accomplishments of our wonderful staff members to formulating a telecommuting plan that will serve all members of the community. Thanks especially to our HR team for working in these areas. And we will continue to reimagine our faculty to align faculty work, evaluation, and rewards, to give greater autonomy and create incentives, remove barriers for collaboration and opportunities to solve grand societal challenges. We are beginning our work in reimagining faculty by discussing RTP expectations and the possibility of new tenure track faculty roles that provide diversity in teaching, research, and service expectations. And we need to do that if we're gonna be viable as a leader in the 21st century of public education. As students' needs evolve, we must also uh, build a growth strategy. We must grow our capacity to offer new programs in new modalities and perhaps in new locations. We will build a growth strategy that keeps CSULB relevant, competitive, and serving the public good. Examples of progress range from new physical facilities for students and alums, enhanced fundraising efforts, campus master planning, and reimagining some of our self-support programs. Thanks to all of you who build and plan and seek support and think out of the box. Finally, we are building momentum to plan for and to create our future. We must ingrain futures thinking in the fabric of our everyday work. Examples range from sustainable buildings and practices to enhanced IT, to a scholarly focus on our current interpersonal climate, so that we can be better in the future we construct. Thanks to everyone who's involved in that work. You can see by just these brief slides that we haven't been waiting to build the future. We're underway, and I need everyone to be part of this continuous process to live our values out loud. That is the centrality of teaching and learning, the strength we have because we are diverse, our commitment to a culture characterized by, by compassion, creativity, innovation, academic excellence, and discovery, and our responsibility for the public good. Living our Beach 2030 aspirations will happen in departments, colleges, and offices all over campus. They won't happen in the president's office. I'm prepared, however, to invest resources new for new and expanded approaches that bring the letters on the pages of our documents associated with Beach 2030 to life. We'll establish metrics and report regularly about our progress in each of our zones of action and more. We have to be in this together if we hope to be successful. It's understandable that we feel perhaps a bit lower energy than usual. Yeah, I can relate. Given the realities of the past 18 months, no one's work, as you've heard uh, earlier, no one's work went untouched from our groundskeepers and custodians to members of my leadership team. We all had our work become harder because of myriad challenges presented by COVID-19. Special thanks again to all who came to work even before the vaccines every day during the pandemic because of the nature of their work. And those who toiled on our faculty and staff to modify their teaching, research, and service modalities to meet public health guidelines and still serve our students 
and they continued to write books and write grants and write articles and to make important discoveries in this research-driven university. I think, however, as we remember that we're all in this together, that is reuniting the beach in familiar and novel ways, we can draw energy from one another. Seeing our students' faces, meeting with colleagues, asking new questions and discovering new things will energize us. Experiencing the excitement of watching our scholar athletes compete and making new community connections will renew us. Reflecting on what we've learned about our various crafts and ourselves during a worldwide plague will build our confidence in future problem solving and build resolve to keep on learning. I, for one, am completely confident in our continued success for about 42,000 reasons. That's all of us if we were all together in one, one place. And because during a plague, we had our highest enrollments, raised a record amount of philanthropic dollars, uh, launched and or completed over 40 capital projects, built a more robust IT network, put 97% of our courses online, thank you ATS, supported thousands of students with federal aid, state resources, and phil philanthropic contributions, won several Big West championships with many postseason successes and saw our alums and coaches at the Olympics, had the best positive media year in memory, won awards related to human resources, sustainability, and on and on. We did that during a global pandemic. We did all that. <laughs> Think what we can do next year. <laughs> I know we all mourn the more than 630,000 Americans who were lost to COVID, and probably many more than the 4.4 million uh, cases that are counted worldwide who were lost to the virus, as well as one of our own staff members, John Fejo, from our G graphic design shop who succumbed to the virus. I know we have empathy for the serious illnesses, economic disasters, and racial and other hate incidents so many experienced. I hope these feelings of connection will build our resolve to create a better beach where health and safety are priorities, success for all students is at the center of our actions, where respect and acceptance for differences are hallmarks, and where innovation, compassion, discovery, and creativity are nurtured. You know, I think we can really do this. What do you think? Give me a yes. Give me a yes, okay? Okay. I appreciate, I appreciate that. I need a little back and forth. Thank you, and go Beach. Thank you. All right, Beach family. All right, Beach family. Thank you for joining us today at the 2021 Convocation. We wish each of you the best for a fall semester, a very strong start and beyond. This, in, this concludes our Convocation. And as we always say, go Beach, go Beach.